Well, we're glad to have you here with us this morning. And our whole goal today is to worship the Lord God Almighty and Jesus Christ because He sent Him here for us. He'd have done it just for me if I had been the only one, right? Amen. Let's stand up and let's start our service with I'll Fly Away. Continue on with Lord, I lift your name on high. No other name is higher 
in the name of Jesus, and we're exalting our God. thank you for the opportunities you afford us each and every day to, to take the gospel to our neighbors, to take the gospel to a friend, to take a gospel to those who are hurting and in need. Father, you have opened many doors in our lives and more doors will open. Father, we thank you for Pecos and Linda today as Pecos will be bringing our message. Father, we ask you to bless him, encourage him, and keep them in, our, in the spirit of what's going on today. Father, we just thank you for the opportunities again to be here freely without reservation or preservation, self-preservation. That we are here to lift up the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ. And these things we ask as we continue in our service this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> 
So as we prepare our hearts and minds for communion time, uh, we're going to sing, We Remember You. And our men can come forward at any time. see someone drowning, you must jump in to save them, whether you can swim or not. In Nazi-occupied Warsaw, Irina and her network would smuggle out the children who surely would have died with their parents in the concentration camps. She would sneak them out by sedating them and carrying them out in a, in a sack or uh, hidden under a stretcher or hidden in a suitcase. You can only imagine the fear of the children, but even, even more so, can you even imagine parents giving up their young child, knowing full well that they would probably never see them again? The child's life was more important than their own. 
the children were then adopted into non-Jewish Polish families or hidden in, in convents or, or orphanages. And Irina would put the real names of the children in a jar buried in a garden. Uh, that, that way she could find the adopted children later and tell them their real identity or possibly reconnect them with family. Irina was captured by the Nazis and beaten severely and imprisoned, uh, but Guard was bribed into releasing her as she went into the underground and continued helping others. Only when several students from Uniontown High School, just east of Fort Scott, Kansas, did a project called Life in a Jar, did the world come to know her work. Eugene Lazowski, this is also from, from World War II, uh, had finished medical school when the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939. And as typhus spread through uh, across the country, the Nazis were quarantined of those with the disease. Uh, and Lazowski and, and others, they were forbidden from treating the Jews, uh, but they did so anyway. Wazowski and a colleague found that they could use a dead strain of bacteria to make it appear that someone had typhus, gave a false positive. They saved as many as 8,000 Jews by using the false test. The third story is a little different and from a different time. An African-American L. Alex Wilson story is different. He was a journalist. Uh, covering the violent mob of white segregationists outside Little Rock's Central High School in 1957. While covering the project of the mandated school integration, out of nowhere, Alex received a crushing kick at the base of his spine. As reporters captured the action, segregationists began to brutally beat and attack Alex. He just took the beating. In Alex's words, he decided not to run. He said, if I were beaten, I'd take it walking if I could, not running. Beaten and bloody, he never saw a doctor that returned to his room to write the story. Disturbing stories about courageous people who put the lives of others ahead of their own. Unsung heroes. Even then, each one of them asked the question, did I do enough? Well, at times we may question whether we do enough in this difficult world we live in, and we all, we all know one thing for sure, and that is that when Christ said, it is finished, that was enough. The suffering that the people that I've mentioned today and the suffering that you and I uh, may endure during our lifetimes pales in comparison to what Christ suffered when he went to the cross. He gave it all. And for what? So that sinners like you and I might have salvation, eternal life with him. That's why we're here. That's why we take communion. To remember the ultimate sacrifice paid by Christ for each and every one of us. He told us, do this in remembrance of me. His sacrifice was not something we deserved. In fact, quite the opposite is true. But he did it anyway. Let us always remember. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. And thank you for that sacrifice that was more than enough. May the love that, that we have for each other be a direct reflection of the love uh, that you have for us uh, that was so great that you were willing to give it all. May each of us do more for others, just knowing that is what you've commanded us to do. Strengthen us in our efforts. We ask this in your son's holy precious name.
morning we've been privileged to listen to Pecos and Linda during our Sunday school time as we gather in here. And today, uh, Pecos is going to bring our message for us. So, uh, Mr. Pecos, if you would like to come up here and... Uh, is, is, he, is he having problems? Uh, just hold on. There you go. It should turn green. <laughs> you have to do those to Mexicans. I knew, I knew that he was going to get me somehow. <laughs> I have been giving you problems since I met him because he said, you know something? You're not from Kansas. <laughs> he has a different accent, that's why you hire him. I have a more different accent. And I hope that you understand me because uh, everything that I learned in English is from Kansas. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> I tell you, that record has given me all kinds of, no problems, but blessings because uh, <clears throat> when every, every time that I speak with somebody from another, another part of the United States, you know, and, and I mentioned, you reckon? Look at me, they are from New York, California, whatever. Where'd you get that? <laughs> In Kansas. I tell you, it's a privilege to be here <clears throat> because this is one of the churches that started helping us in 1978. Long time ago. 40, how many years? 40, 44, 41, 41 years, 41. That's what, uh, 44 I had been married with him. And it's still strong, you know. I don't know what I did to her, but she still loves me. <laughs> and I love her too, you know. And she has been such a great help me. What is our call as Christians? You know, everybody has a call. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has to get involved. And you don't have to go to another country or another region. You have a call, you know. As a servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a call. And the call is to serve. You know, to serve Him as Lord and Savior. Everything that I say to you like this, man, change it, please. So, the Great Commission is the last words of Jesus said to His disciples was this. That was His disciples and He was telling Him, then Matthew 28, 18 and 20, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them a word that nobody likes. Them to obey. Obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know, that is one part that <clears throat> some people don't understand. That in order to make disciples, you have to obey what Jesus told you. But many people don't like to obey. It is very regular with everybody in the world. Obedience is a problem. Now, we cannot tell the kids, or even our own kids, to obey us. In the school, they say, don't, 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 you know, they, uh, there is, I'm sure that there is some teachers that they have been telling, be, be kind with them, don't talk very strong. In the churches, they say, do not mention very strong things to the people because maybe they won't come back. Be nice. I have never seen in the Bible the word nice. <laughs> no Nike. Nice. I don't want to be nice. Because I obey. My father was a soldier. And I'm telling you, if you know what I'm talking about, when you go to the army, navy, or whatever you go, when they say, tell you, turn! Attention, and I mean, you have attention to the man. <coughs> run, you run. 
Jump! You jump. And don't, do not hesitate on anything. Because you're going to obey and you understand exactly what is demanded to obedience. Next. Our commission that the Lord sent us to do was to make disciples. That was the whole call. He didn't send us, and there is, I, I, I thank God for people that they have this gift to go and make and, 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 and do orphanages all over in different places on the world, to help the people in, in hospitals with medicine and things like this, and uh, to do all kinds of stuff, you know, but in the meanwhile they're making disciples. Our job in Mexico is to make men and women disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was our call, and that's your call. Amen? How are you going to do it? That depends on you. If you want to obey, I don't hear no amens at all. You don't think you have to teach them that say amen. Once in a while, you know when this, when the Holy Spirit touches, you say amen. I know that you guys don't get excited, but it's all right. Our commission was to make disciples. Being disciple maker is our passion. This guy over here. He was a friend of my, on, on my, on my sons. He, lived, he was a neighbor. Oh, he's a neighbor still. And uh, <clears throat> and he, my sons were. You, you met Sean, and you met maybe you met Anthony, but they were with us all the time. You know, they were with us all the time, and we took them to church camps and to the church. And I never forget when when Anthony say that. Why we are the, always the one that is leave the church at last? Because I am the preacher, and you are my son, and you want to do it. You understand? <laughs> and then, 15 years later, when he was a youth minister in Kansas City, he said to me, you know that? I thank you. To teach me how to obey. Because that has been great in my ministry. Now, if you come to the church, bring the kids from when they are very little until they leave your, your house, and pray for them to leave your house. <laughs> I mean, there is people that they stay for. How old are you? I'm 45, and what are you doing? I still live in a home. Excuse me, you know, my kids left home because they came to the States when they were between eight, uh, 17 and 19. You know, they came to Manhattan Christian College and in Wichita. And I thank God for that. You know, because really they went independent. When they, you have to let them go. You have to let them fly. We want to help our kids all the time. Now when I when when they call me, you know, how much? <laughs> they are not saying hi, Dad. You know, you know, are they there is only how much? But you know, but now they, that they have kids of their own, they understand. You don't understand. You don't understand at all what it is to be a father until you have children or you adopt the children or you are with children because you love them and help them and you want to help them for the rest of your life. Amen? Amen. You know? This guy, <clears throat> just one second, I'm sorry. Now that this is return. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has a big accident for life and death. I mean, 20 years later. This is this year picture. And he called me. He called Lina, he said, you know, Lina, where are you guys meeting? Where, where is the church that you are going because we want to go? And I want to tell you my story, that's what he said. He came to the church and he told me that he was in an accident and, and he don't, didn't know how in the world he is alive for the big accident. He said, I want, I want to return my life to my, to my Lord because I have not been good. And I want my wife to follow me. 
and to follow the, the law. Linda has the privilege to baptize her. We are counseling them every, every two weeks. We go to their house, they have a little boy, and they, and they say, I want this little boy to learn about our Lord Jesus Christ. I left when I came back. Amen? And, when, when, and I say, you know, we have been always praying for you. And that's one thing that I want you to understand. You have to pray, number one, for your children. For your own children. Never give up your children. You are not are the one that is going to change them. You change them by your attitude, by your, the way that you treat them. But the one that changes people is God. Through you. Through you. Through us. Because we, God wants us to be disciple makers. But the question is, are you a disciple? or you are just attending. Now, I don't see nothing wrong with this church at all. I mean, my gosh, what more do you want? Is the temperature right? Isn't that nice? Because outside it's 100 degrees. Or will be. It's Kansas. <laughs> but God can use you. Now, next. The second commission, the first commission was of Jesus, to say, go and make disciples. The second commission is of Paul to Timothy. He said, you know, now it's Paul to Timothy. And he said, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. We need to have witnesses that we are Christians. Amen? You can say that you are. You can think that you are. But people is watching you. Or you are in the secret service of the Christian church. And nobody knows. I mean, as for example, you know, one thing in the United States is that in the moment that you're starting to get with a, with a little money or a thing like this, the first thing that you do, you have a garage, you know? And in that garage, you enter to your car, you know, enter to your car and you open it, close it. And the outside world, who cares? You are inside, you know? Inside. Nobody knows. You don't, you, you don't, they don't know. They don't know. You don't even know who is your neighbor. You pray that there is not a Mexican beside you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, you know, I was telling that there is a Mexican in there. How do you know? You know. They are loud. The, the, those that have Mexican neighbors, they don't understand you know? No, no Latinos. Mexican is another culture. We are always try to be happy and things like that, you know. But but you have to have witnesses in order to say, among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men. That is our job for making disciples. To try to find in the churches, wherever we go, these faithful men and women. Now I say faithful men and women because I do not, I do not go and disciple a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a mujer. Because that's my job. That's the job of my wife. Amen? Amen. The big problem now in the churches is that these guys are counseling women, the preachers. And there is many, many problems. If I have, if I talk have a council that somebody wants to counsel with me, a woman that comes in, we have, we have problems. I say, talk with my wife. Talk with my wife. And then after they talk to me, bring your husband. Because I want to see, like, uh, what, was the, what, what was the name of this guy that said the other side of the story or the end of the story? Oh. Huh? 
Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. I want to hear the rest of the story with the man, because why you are complaining about him, I want to hear what he complains about you. <laughs> Amen? Because there is two sides of the story, and that's when we come in counseling. You know, that's how we do it. We, they, we, and we tell them that we want to give them three times, three chances. The first chance, Linda and I, we are listening to them, and she's taking notes. Or everything that they say, no, but this guy and this guy, no, but she, no, that, that, that. Always, you know, say, okay, we'll see you next time. So they come next, next time, and they say, okay, you see that? And we say, this is the Bible. Are you believers of the Word of God? Yes, we are, because we meet them at the church. I said, okay, do you believe in the Word of God? Do you believe that what it says here, you want to obey? And I make it obey. You follow? You reckon? <laughs> and I say, obey. Okay? So they say, okay. Well, after you tell me all about him and all about her, you have to do one thing. Now that's the most important in marriage. Forgive her. Forgive him. Amen? Forgiveness is the key of everything. As Jesus forgive us, we have to forgive one another. I cannot do that. There's people that say that, I cannot do that. He was with another woman, or he did this, or he was that, or she did this, and she said, I'm sorry, you have to forgive her. And forgive him in order to continue in marriage. Can you do it? And I make them read the Bible. <clears throat> now, for what I say, we are biblical counselors. That means that we believe in the word of God that it says, and that's what we want to apply. I am not a sociologist, psychiatric, or so and so. Whatever. I believe only in the word of God that it says over there, and we have to apply. Apply that now. That's how we counsel it. In the joint agreement with this, we can continue because now we want to really help you. What if you believe? And the other one is if you obey. Some people have, do not return. They already have in their minds separation. They already have in their minds, or they are with somebody else. You know? Now, it is so incredible Divorce rates. I mean, divorce is like, uh, if I get mad with you, you know, let's get a divorce. I don't care stand you anymore. Wait a minute, wait, wait. You know, life is not going to go easy all the time. You know, we can, we can work it out. We can work it out. Come on. No, no. We let it go. And you know who, who is many times the fault? The parents. You know why? Because they say to her, I told you to not marry that guy. <laughs> I told you to not marry that woman. Instead of, hey, wait a minute, you know, let's, let's, let's think about it. There is children involved. Yes or no? I don't want you to raise your hand. Because some of us, we have problems with our own children getting married. You know? and, and you can bring through the Word of God, we can, we can bring through the church for so many years, they even go to Bible colleges and stuff like this, and they're still in divorce. And so now you are in that situation. But God can help you if you obey Him. Now, there are situations that are very difficult, and I understand. And you know, there is an other chances that God gives you to life. God bless you. It is a, a great opportunity because God is a God of opportunities, of second chances. I don't want to do what I did wrong over here with my, with my new wife. And the only thing that I'm saying to you guys, I tell you, you don't want to have any problem? <coughs> Obey her. You guys didn't follow? You didn't reckon that one? 
you obey her, you don't want to have no problems. <laughs> you know, in the nice way. But it, be, not just obey, you have to love her. Now, woman, you say women or women? Several. Women. She's my translator. Women. The only thing that men want is respect. That word, respect, that's all. It says, a man should love his wife, love in everything that she wants, in details. We are not details men. I mean, there are some guys that have this gift, I don't have it. But I try. And you know, and I have been asking in all our conferences, and we ask, and, and, and I am asking you, if he comes to you with one rose or with a dozen roses, what would you prefer? A dozen roses or one rose? Yeah. Raise your hand the one that has one rose. One rose. One rose only. A dozen roses. Nobody because it costs a lot of money. So when rose, I say, we men are so stupid that we cannot give it even here one rose, man. When you bring one rose, you get a mate. But she say, ah, you think about me. Yes, I think. One rose. No plastic rose. <laughs> No, 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 uh, dollar tree or dollars, dollar, gen dollar general, anyway. A real rose. But they, women, like details. And we need respect. Amen? That is the most important thing. Now, when you find these faithful men who, who will be able to teach others, that's discipleship. That is what it's all about. Christianity is all about discipleship. You know, if you don't have one guy that you have disciple, or you don't have one man, one mentor that has disciple in you, you just come to church and you just come and leave church. Man. You need to find somebody else that you haven't seen that he can help you with the word of God. Can be your preacher, can be, you know, it's like with music. You know, I remember that you guys used to have a choir, not choir, but I mean, uh, four people singing over here. And they sound really good, you know, great. But, but they need to have people that they teach one another. Couples, if you need, to, if you see that in here in the church somebody's having trouble, go find and go help them out. No, help, help, we need help. And if they have confidence in you, number one, you want to hear what happened, and then they, they, they will ask you, you will ask them, do you want me to help you, to tell you, or why you take it? No, you tell me, okay, you tell them. Amen? That's what we have to do. With our own children, the same. You know, now, Men who will be able to teach others also. Next. We go to churches in Mexico. This is the church that we are going every Sunday. And that is a very rare church in Mexico because it's all of the church, it's a cabin, it's, a, it's like a Swiss cabin. It's made of wood. It doesn't exist in Mexico. Wood doesn't exist. We have rocks, we have Break, break, brick, we have a stone, we have everything, but no wood. It's very expensive. We don't have any wood whatsoever. Well, this guy, he built, he built uh, Swiss cabins in, in Mexico, you know, and he built this church that is all wood. You know, it's amazing, it's beautiful. And we go and we bring people, invite people in the church one Saturday a month, you know, on the last Saturday of the month, we bring everybody from the church and friends to teach a, a, a marriage ministry, you know, a marriage conference. 
and 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 as you see, Linda starts the conference, and then I, we are the, the two of them. We are dual teachers. You know, she speaks perfect Spanish. I mean, it's amazing how good my wife speaks. But my gosh, he has been 40 years in Mexico. Please, she has to speak Spanish. Well, no, she she has a gift in the language. She translates from English to Spanish, from Spanish to English, and they call her. Can you help us to translate? How do we do this? And she goes to all conference because she's the Mexican blonde. <laughs> you know, really, this is just amazing. God can use you in in the way that you let him, you. I I have been blessed with a woman that is still this fat Mexican. You know, and and, and I love it. She loves me. And the Mexicans say, hey, what you have done to this woman? Because she really loves you. Amen? Because I really love her. And I appreciate you very much. You know? Next. <clears throat> I love this one. This is this this is two verses in Timothy that we really have to learn. Paul is telling to Timothy, number one, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. In season and out of season. That means whenever it comes, preach the word. That is our duty. That is our work. That's how you make disciples. You, of course, are you share with them, but you have to preach the word. Preach the word. And you have to know the word. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you have to at least bring your Bible or whatever, but you have to memorize the word, you have to preach the word, and I love this. That's something that we don't do anymore because we cannot do it. We cannot correct, we cannot rebuke, and we cannot, well, I, we can encourage. But the other, the other correct and rebuke, they are kind of, they, people, some people, even in the churches, they tell you, don't, lose, don't, sing, don't be too strong. This is a friendly church. Have you been in that church today? Oh, no, 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 don't, 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 no, no, no. You, maybe they come back. They don't come back. Let them don't come back. We want disciples only. Amen? We need Christians that are willing to be correct and willing to be rebuked with great patience and careful instruction. That's when I bring Linda. I correct, I rebuke, and I encourage and help Linda with great patience because I don't have any patience. Then that's, that's my character. Now what's this? <clears throat> Review, correct. Everybody knows what is correct. If you, you see something that is wrong, you have to correct. But review, that's something that I, I wanted to know what in the world is that word. A strong correction that leads to what? Healing. Strong correction. When have you been rebuked? When, when, when in the English language they use rebuke? Not in the, in the schools anymore. They don't do that. Rebuke? Excuse me? Rebuke is a strong. But of course, when we have to correct, we have to rebuke, and we have to encourage. Our ministry is called marriage encouragement because we encourage the people to stay together in our Lord and to continue even when all the troubles come through because they are forgiving one another. And I say, when you walk with your wife, Hold her hand. When you stay here in the church, hold her hand. When you go, when you are, you know, your your children will be watching how much do you love your wife by you holding her. Amen. Come on, man. Don't be afraid. Hold her. As she knows that she belongs to you and you will come to her. When you are the guy, come on, hurry up! 
<laughs> you are always late. You know, and here she comes with all the stuff, you know, and, and things like this, and think, no, we're supposed to be the helpers. You know, and that's what we need to be. Now, next, with great patience and careful instruction. That is where we decide. That's when we instruct the people. We go and we choose a specific individ uh, uh, not individuals, couples from different churches around Mexico that they come to our instruction of marriage encouragement. And we give them classes about how to be a teacher, but by their own example. How to teach others you know, with the word of God and with this specific, I tell you, I wish that you would please write down or, or later on, Marriage on the Rock by Jimmy Evans from Dallas, Texas. We went to this course of 10, 10 classes for three days and in order for us to be certified and use it in Mexico. They don't have this course in Spanish. But since my wife has the gift of translation, we translate the whole book. Well, not we, she translates. I don't want to. She just did like this. She translated the whole book into Spanish. And we are giving this book to everywhere that we go. Because we have the permission of the dude of the very Dallas that we can do it. And it's just amazing. Marriage of the, the ministry of this guy is marriage today. Jimmy Evans, Dallas. And I tell you what, he talks about 10 teams that they are specific in this life now, in this moment of life. Blended families. You guys, some of here are, you, 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 your children, my children, and our children. And that has been now blended families. Parents, grandparents, you know, we have to, they, he tells me, we just leave them alone, grandparents. Let them, let, them, let, them, let them find out their own life. Help them, but don't tell them what to do. And, and more when they say, how much? You say, nothing, bye. <laughs> but, with great patience and careful instruction. What is our call? What is your call? To obey, to encourage, to rebuke, to correct, to preach the word. And you don't have to go to another country to do it. We failed the call from the very beginning of the life of Jesus and my life. I felt the call to return to my country. When I was baptized, I remember very specific that we get out of the water, I felt that Jesus said to me, what well, God said to me, I want you to go to a Bible college. When you finish, return to Mexico as a missionary. That was my call. You know? And I didn't have any money to go to a college. I went to the president lounge in that time in Manhattan Christian College, and I told my story about what happened. And he said to me, well, let's find out who gave you the call. If God gives you the call, you will be finishing in school. If he did it, in six months you return to your country. I spent five years in Manhattan Christian College. And there was somebody. And I went Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to school. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday, I work in maintenance in the school. I always have a job, you know, but I didn't have enough to pay the school. And anonymously, anonymously, for five years, at the end of the semester, somebody paid my school. Of course, I passed with a C. <laughs> I am a 2.0. <laughs> Will I finish? Amen.
the whole thing of the school is to finish because the diploma that they're going to give you, you're going to put it in the wall and it doesn't say 2.0 or 4.0. It says you are the minister of the Lord or the Lord Jesus Christ from Manhattan Christian College. Amen? So don't push your kids to be a 4.0 if you never was a 4.0. You know, just do your very best to pass, pass, because you don't want to see that, that, that thing again in your life. <laughs> anyway, what is your call? What is your call? Because everybody has a call. And we thank you so much for calling us, for giving us, for being a part of your congregation. We are a part of it. You are the senders. We are the boys. And you know, I am asking every church that, that they have to have a nice world map of all the people, all the people, through the years that you have helped. And you will be surprised. Put a picture of that people. And put the dates. This guy went in 1975, 1985, 1980. Well, these church sent individuals to the world or even pastors from this congregation that they came out. You know, but you have to do that because you have to see that you mean business, guys. You mean business. You are the senders. You teach, you preach, you rebuke, you, you, you correct, you encourage, but now you sin. And that is the great thing. Don't be surprised that your daughters or your sons will go to the mission field. You are bringing them over here. This is the preparation. You send them to church camps, that's the preparation to the battle. And if they decide that they're going to be pastors, that they're going to be, you know, workers for the Lord, sometimes kids don't say no. You say, no, you don't want to make money with that kind of career. You know? You don't want to be a farmer like me? And the kids say, no! <laughs> He's going to decide whatever he is, his call. Her call, your call. But everybody has a call. And God will be with you until the very end.
Continuing with your partner, we are going to take up a, an offering, a love offering. So as you leave today, there'll be a plate in the back if you feel hard led to help these guys. They have a lot of expenses coming over here and being in the churches and things and traveling. Let's let's help them out. If it's on your heart, please give a little bit for them to, to, to go on. And we want to continue to partner with you. All right. Uh, in your bulletin, there's a little survey back there and then Delbert has kindly agreed to do some video work for us, and we're going to try to eventually get this on our website, you know, uh, to be out there and maybe other areas. So if you would read that and participate, we'd really appreciate it because it means a lot to us. It could mean a lot to our community. It could be our great big outreach to this area. So uh, we can use this for our, for our services and for people who are that need God, you know, we can reach out and touch them with that. So. Or, oh, just, uh, okay. you know, just leave it in the pews and we'll pick it up. Just leave it in the pews. We'll, we'll go by and pick it up after church. And, and uh, if you do that, we'd appreciate that. Anything else? Brian, do you have anything to say? Or Yes. Oh, so, uh, yeah, if you look in your bulletins, uh, below the verses to remember in red, there is a block about a junior or senior high uh, missions and fellowship trip that is going to be August the 2nd and the 3rd. Um, so we just wanted to highlight this. Um, we are going to be going to Kansas City to uh, do a missions project with uh, one of the local homeless shelters. I'm working with two different ones uh, for some possible like serving on Friday night. I'll have more details about that next week. Uh, but then a fun fellowship time for the teens the next day at Worlds of Fun, uh, and then coming back on, uh, on Saturday evening. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Some of the big things that kind of like immediately matter are we need to know if you are going by July 13th because we need head counts for where we're staying as well as where we're going to be um, serving and you head counts for that kind of stuff. Um, it does say $75 plus food. If that costs us, you know, we're gonna be doing a couple fundraisers quickly. Um, please do not let that be a deterrent to you or if you know somebody who wants to come, don't let that be a hurdle to them. Uh, we'll figure it out. And, and make that work for them because we want to go and serve on Friday and have fun and fellowship on Saturday. Um, there's a sign up sheet in the back on the table. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking control of that. Okay, anything else? <coughs> yes, yeah, so uh, if you would please be praying for um, the Smothers family. Um, Jay Smothers uh, has come to camp all his life, really. And uh, he was working for CIY. Uh, and was traveling to through Kentucky and got automobile accident and got killed. Uh, and so this young man is from Norton. Uh, and so I have uh, two staff there that really, they went to camp uh, with him as well, uh, Maya and Gracie, and they're taking pretty far too. So please be praying for the family and our camp and uh, 
Uh, all, all the people there involved. Okay, mighty fine. All right, let's sing our way out of here.